I often find myself switching between Android and Apple phones. On one hand, I love the reliability and speed of iOS. iMessage is also another great perk, I can even message on airplanes, as is the wide selection of apps in the Apple App Store. But the iPhone X's price I just can't get on board with. Too many issues out of the gate, too many unoptimized apps, and no headphone jack. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it up. So Apple fans, this is your time to jump ship. Reinvest your $1,000 into the LG V30. Plus, I don't know, like 40 large pizzas. But wait a minute, the LG V30 costs $800. That's still high. Monthly payments on these phones are about a fourth of what you'd pay for a car lease. Plenty of V30 and iPhone 10 reviews have already hit YouTube, so in this video, I figured I'd throw in a bit of a comparison and bring sound judgment to the core of the Apple fan base. Get it? Core? is you know, like core of the apple never mind So the LG V30 is one sexy phone you Apple lovers can't deny, and I'll give the iPhone X credit where it's due, it looks pretty sweet as well. I will say, however, that the way in which the screen wraps around the iPhone's top bezel is a turnoff, at least for me. I'd much rather take the V30's approach, super slim bezels on both the top and bottom of the phone, give it a Samsung Galaxy S8-esque appeal. It also centers the screen on the phone's chassis, just seems a bit more balanced. From a raw performance perspective, the iPhone iPhone 10 undoubtedly takes the cake. Apple's A11 Bionic chip powers its six cores to a single score of 4200 on Geekbench 4, about 10,000 on the multi-core side. This is higher than some desktop processors. This performance, mind you, is mirrored on the iPhone 8. The LG V30, though, lags behind despite boasting an extra two cores. Its Snapdragon 835 yields around 1900 on the single side, 6200 on the multi. That combined with only four gigs of RAM makes the V30 only satisfactory in its current state. I'd like to have seen six gigs of RAM for future-proofness and, you know, trading multitasking and the balancing of the operating system and its overhead with what you're gonna be doing on the phone. Four seems like a, a just, I don't know, it's an okay number. The iPhone 10 only sports three gigs of RAM, but this is perfectly fine when seen in the context of its lightweight UI. These are facts. I can't argue with them, but the V30 has plenty on board for a comeback. Starting first with the screen. Sporting a 6-inch QHD Plus 2880x1440 resolution OLED display, you'll be hard-pressed to find and discern individual pixels, and that crazy contrast ratio yields some of the truest blacks around. You can say the same about the iPhone's 2436x1125 unconventional pixel display, still OLED and still sporting rounded corners, but overall PPI is around 15% lower. Not that you'll notice. Both screens are calibrated well enough, though I lean a bit more toward LG's more natural looking screen. Apple's oversaturated things just a bit here. Of course these presets can be adjusted, it's just something I've noted when I first compared them side by side. Now let's talk cameras. I'll tell you that neither is really a clear winner, although I do prefer one over the other. Both sport dual cameras with different functions. The V30's primary sports the better aperture and higher pixel count, but this doesn't always translate well on paper. The iPhone's primary has a wider field of view, which I think is great, and you'll have excellent optical zoom with that telephoto lens. Overall, I noticed more contrast in the iPhone, which I have no problem with. Colors are a bit deeper, and low light performance is still excellent. The V30 falls slightly behind despite its wider aperture, which is a bit weird, yet it boasts slightly better color reproduction in my book. Where the LG truly shines though is with its secondary wide angle lens. Field of view is amped up to the extreme here, which I love. I'd honestly be okay with this as the primary camera and a telephoto or something along those lines as a secondary. Overall, I'd say the iPhone 10 takes the better photo, but I'd swap an overdone portrait mode for a secondary wide angle any day of the week. As for video, essentially the same story. The iPhone shoots at up to 4K 60fps, which is pretty insane for a phone, the V30 topping out at 4K 30. You can film in the same resolution with the wide-angle lens though, which gives it an edge. I'd also favor the V30's optical image stabilization, or video stabilization, over the iPhone X's, along with its superior recording volume and clarity. Slow motion capabilities definitely tip in favor of the iPhone. The V30's 720p 120 mode looks absolutely terrible. With the iPhone, you can keep the resolution in 1080p and record it twice the frame rate. Night and day difference here. All right, testing the front-facing cameras on both the V30 and the iPhone X. I just noticed that the LG's crops me quite a bit more than the iPhone's does. Uh, this camera in general has much more natural color reproduction. 
it seems like the LGs is a bit washed out. The front-facing camera is no doubt worse on the V30. Both front-facing cameras are decent, but the iPhones is better, just point blank. Higher resolution, higher frame rate, although I'm not sure why you'd need 720p, 240fps support in the front camera. I'm not even sure if that's like legit on the spec sheet. And better low-light performance. LG's video stabilization at the front is better. It's important, I suppose, for vloggers. So it ultimately comes down to the preferences of the user. In other areas of the spec sheet, you'll find that these two phones constantly trade blows. The iPhone is slightly thicker, yet smaller in other dimensions, which I actually prefer. The iPhone doesn't sport a headphone jack, which is just stupid. The V30s is up top and in the perfect place. Really no complaints here, apart from the fact that you don't get headphones out of the box. That's something that uh, really makes no sense to me. I'd prefer headphones, but because they don't have headphones included, I'm not really going to give this a win to the V30. Sound quality tips in favor of the iPhone X, with the earpiece acting as a second, albeit slightly treble speaker, you'll essentially have a stereo array here. I'm also loving the lows from the bottom speaker. With the V30, you get neither of these things. Only one speaker down at the base, and it's pretty trashy by comparison. Still gets quite loud though. Other subtle observations, the LG's fingerprint scanner is noticeably faster than Apple's Face ID response time despite how much they boasted it uh, in the keynote. Both phones support fast charging, but the LG's larger 3300 mAh battery wins the endurance battle, easily lasting a full 16 hour day under heavy use, that's my version of heavy use which is really high. It also boasts stereo quad parallel delta sigma converter channels with a 32 bit interpolation filter for a low noise conversion process as Android Authority puts it. It's basically a better substitute for Snapdragon's SoC solution, a high quality 32 bit DAC intended to make wired audio playback sound as crispy as a taco shell. Let me tell you, it does sound really good, I wish you could hear it in person. There's really quite a lot packed into both of these phones, but it seems as though Apple's targeting the screen real estate as the 10's biggest selling point, whereas LG took a little bit of everything in their approach with some of the smaller features packed inside. When it comes down to it, both of these devices are excellent, maybe not for the price, but that's just my opinion. I mean, come on, 800 bucks for this? Like phones four years ago were less than half this price brand new. Those concerned with budgets are probably better off with OnePlus or Huawei models. These are the biggest and best in their classes. As for which I would personally pick, it's got to be the LG V30. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thumbs down for the opposite. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.